All right, guys, we're going to go on to our next unit, and that's going to be for circles. So this first section that we're going to do is pretty simple. It's just a bunch of terminology about circles, okay, and some definitions. So let's formally go over the definition of circle. So the definition you want to write is it's the set of all points a given distance from a given point, okay? So I know you know what it looks like, but that's the actual geometric definition right there, okay? So imagine, get a pen, imagine infinitely many points going around the same distance from a certain point, which is that one right there, point C. So all those red points that are the exact same distance, they eventually will form a solid line. Infinitely many points. Again, you'll be there forever because there's infinitely many. That's a true definition of what a circle is, okay? So that distance that all those points are from, that is called a radius. So the distance goes from there to there. And you can draw infinitely many radii too. You can go from here to there, there, there. Lots of different ways to, um, and then there's the center. Okay. And so, the given point is always going to be called the center that I just highlighted in blue. In this case, that's point C. So the center is pretty easy. Okay, and that's point C. Okay. Now, notation. This is how you name the circle. Okay, so you're going to name the circle by obviously putting a circle symbol, and then you just use the letter that um, is used for the center. So circle C. That's how you name the circle. So on your homework, you'll be a, you'll be asked to name different circles, and so you just have to use the letter. The next one is called a chord. Okay, a chord is a line segment. So I'm going to highlight that word segment because a while back you learned how to name a segment. It has a certain symbol that you need to use. Okay, and this is when uh, you have a segment and its endpoints lie on the circle. So we've got three examples of three different chords. Here's chord EB, here's chord DF, and here's chord AC. Okay, so how do you name it? Think back to how you name a segment. You have segment AC, you have segment FD, and you have segment EB. Okay, and those are the chords in this circle. So we're going to give you a picture on your homework, and you're going to have to name the, all the chords you see. Next term is a diameter. A diameter is a chord that passes through the center. So I'm going to highlight the word chord because I just defined what a chord was. Only this one, it goes through the center. Okay, so I'm going to highlight the center. And it is the longest chord. Okay, so this will be your longest chord in a, any type of circle. So how do you name the, the chords the same way we just did a second ago? So we have chord ZY, that is a diameter, and you have chord WX, and that's the other diameter here. Okay, you have to be sure though you see the center in order to identify it as a diameter. The next one is a tangent. A tangent is going to be a line, okay? So how do you name a line? Think back to a long time ago, what kind of symbol those have? Lines. This is gonna be a line that intersects a circle only once at a point called the point of tangency, okay? So we have two examples of some tangents, okay? Obviously, right there, it touches a circle at that point and at that point, point G and point F. So we have tangent FE, okay, and you have to put the arrows on top. And then you have tangent GH, and again, make sure you put the correct symbol on top, okay, because tangents are lines. The point of tangency for um, this one is point F, and the other one is G. All you have to do is write a letter. 
So be able to name tangents in a picture given to you on your homework. The next term is secant. Secant is a line, so another line again. So I'm going to highlight the word line because you have to use the correct symbol. And it intersects the circle in two places. So that's the big difference from a secant and a tangent. So we have two, tan two secants here. We have secant AB, and it goes through the circle twice, one at A, one at B. And then you have secant DC, and again, you make sure you put the arrows on those. Okay, so those are secants. They're going to go through, enter the circle, and exit the circle. Okay, next term um, are congruent circles, circles that have the same radius. Okay, and so I have a real life example there. But if you look at all of these radii, these all have six feet as their radius. So those all three, all three of those circles are congruent. Down here you have, right here, I don't know if y'all know what those are. Those are records. All the records usually are one size. There actually were two types of records. There were so small records and large records, but those would be congruent circles. We have another term over here called concentric circles. So these are coplanar circles. So coplanar means on the same plane and they have the same center. So th those are real important things right there. Having the same center and that they are coplanar, meaning on the same plane. So the center is going to be right there, okay? That's the center for every single one of the circles around it. And this one doesn't have a center, so we're gonna put one there. And so that would be the center right there. <clears throat> so that's an example of some concentric circles. You'll maybe have to draw them on your homework. The next one is um, an arc. An arc is a continuous portion of a circle between two points. Okay, and you can either draw the full circle or you don't have to. So like right here, this is part of a circle, so that's an arc. This part right here, that's an arc, and this is an arc right here. So those are two different arcs that we're gonna name. Okay, we're gonna name it one way for now, but there's actually a specific way you name these arcs. Okay, so you have arc AB over there, and the symbol to you, it might be new right there, so you're gonna put a little arch over that. And then over here, this particular arc right here is CE, okay? And I'm gonna highlight it yellow, and we're not gonna name I'm not going to name the other arc because there's a specific way you name that one, okay? Um, so the pink arc, I'll show you how to name in a second. So anyways, just know the definition of what an arc is. Okay, first type of arc that I want to talk about is the semicircle, okay? This is half a circle. There's a couple things I want you to jot down. This is an arc, okay? This, a semicircle is an arc, okay? because it's part of a circle. It's an arc whose endpoints are the endpoints of a diameter. So you have to have a diameter involved when identifying a semicircle. And then the measure of it is 180 degrees. So arcs, the sides, angles have measures, okay? And they're in degrees. So let me get my highlighter. It's already highlighted pink, but I'm gonna highlight it again. This right here, is an example of a semicircle. This side over here is also a semicircle, and because this right here is a diameter, so you have to make sure you have a diameter. Okay, this arc right here is 180 degrees, as well as this one over here. Okay, because a full circle makes 360. So, how do you name the arc? Okay, let me see if I have, I don't have. So I'll just use red. But to name that pink arc, you have to use three letters. So you're going to write A, D, C with the arc symbol on top. If you started with C, that's fine. Just make sure you do C, D, A. You have to do the pattern of the arc. Okay. If you were to say arc C, A, D, that's a completely different arc that we're going to talk about in a minute. So this is a semi <clears throat> and again, arcs can have degrees. 
next type of arc is a minor arc. A minor arc is an arc that is smaller than the semicircle. So we have an arc whose measure is going to be less than 180 degrees. So we have a pink arc right here. I'm going to highlight it again in pink again. That arc right there is a minor arc. Okay. In fact, here's another example of a minor arc over here that I just highlighted in blue. So the way you name this minor arc is only with two letters. So we have arc AC that I just highlighted in blue. And then we have arc AD that I highlighted in pink. So those are the two ways you name an arc, a minor arc, and a semicircle. So you will, ask, you will be asked to identify and name a semicircle and a minor arc in the, in the homework page. And there's one more type of arc, and that's called the major arc. A major arc is an arc larger than a semicircle. So it's larger than a semicircle. Okay, and this arc is going to be greater than 180 degrees. So, Actually, let me highlight it first. It's highlighted in pink, but I want to do that again. So from here to here, all the way to C. This is an example of a major arc, okay? There's another major arc that we can name too that I'm going to highlight in blue. It's going to go from here all the way to A. So you have a blue major arc and a pink major arc, okay? There's actually another major arc I'm going to go on the inside. If I start here, I'm going to use green, and I go all the way to A. That's another major arc. So I'm going to name all three of those right there. Okay, I think I got all of them. Just to be sure, I might be missing one. No, I can I can draw another one. I'm running out of colors. Let's see. Let me use orange right here. Here's another major arc. If I start here at C, and I go all the way to D. So see, there's lots of different major arcs that you can name. So let me get my pen. Let's name the pink one right here. I'm going to use red. And this is arc. And then on this one too, just like the semicircle, you have to use three letters. Because okay? you will be confused if you don't use three with a minor arc. Right, so the red arc that I'm about to name, which is that highlighted in pink, is going to be B to A to C. Okay, and you just want to cross paths of all those letters. So B to A to C. Now B is also there, so the way to name that pink arc also is the same as B, D, C. These right here are the same. Okay. Let's name the blue arc. Let me get my blue pen. My blue pen would be B, C, A. Again, you can name it using a different letter. You could say B, D, A. Okay, these right here are the same. Uh, let me get my green pen. Let's name the green arc. The green arc is D, B, A. D, B, A, which could also be written as D, C, A. Now, you do not have to name them both like that, okay? I'm just naming both of them because you may write it one way, somebody else may, may write it the other way, and y'all are both going to be correct, okay? Let's do one more. Let's do the orange one since I did put it on there. So the orange arc is D. B, C, D, B, C. Some, somebody else might write it D, A, C, D, A, C, and that is also correct. Okay, so there's a couple ways to name it depending on how many letters they give you. You just have to make sure that it goes uh, larger than half away around the circle. So that is a major arc. So be prepared to name a semicircle, a minor arc, and a major arc on your homework paper. Next definition is a central 
angle, a central angle is going to be an angle. So you've worked with angles before. Okay, this is going to be an angle with its vertex at the center. Okay, and the sides pass through the endpoints of an arc. Okay, we also want to write down that the sides, I'm going to make room somewhere, the sides are radii. So the sides of the angle are radii. So then when you have a central angle, there's a measure that you can put to it. The measure of a central angle, the measure of a central angle is the same as its intercepted arc. Okay, so you need to make note of that. So let's talk about the first type of angle that I see here. I'm going to highlight it in red. Angle D O A. That intercepts the arc A B. Okay. So I'm going to put um, arc A D right next to the angle. Okay. Well, <clears throat> this looks like an idea angle. We're just going to go ahead and say that it's 90. So angle A O D is 90 degrees. Well, guess what? Arc A B. Is also 90 degrees. So whatever that central angle is, that is also 90. So <clears throat> the measure of angle AOD equals 90 degrees. The measure of arc AD is 90 degrees. Okay. Let's take a look at the other central angle we see there. Okay. Angle B O C. That looks like a real small angle. Let's pretend that it's about, I don't know, 30 degrees. Looks smaller, but we're just going to say 30. So the measure of angle B O C is 30 degrees. The measure of arc B C is 30 degrees as well. Because remember, is 30 degrees, okay? And that's a central angle. Last definition, an inscribed angle, okay? This is an angle with its vertex on the circle and the sides are chords. So here's one angle and I'm gonna highlight it in one color. That is an inscribed angle, okay? Actually, uh, let me use a different color. Just so I can so here's a blue angle. Okay, and I actually have a green angle over here. This one here using that same chord. Okay, so I have a blue angle that goes right there, and then I have a green angle that goes right here. That those are two types of inscribed angles. So let's name the blue angle first. The blue angle is going to be angle C. B, A. That is an inscribed angle. And then I'll use my green pen to name the other angle. The other angle is angle D, C, B. Okay, and we're not going to talk about the measures of those angles quite yet. Okay, so we have this angle here and this angle here. And you can see that their sides are chords. Remember, the chords are segments in a circle. Okay. Now, if you just want to kind of see what arc it intercepts, this blue angle intercepts this arc right here, okay? And then this green angle intercepts this arc over here. So let's write that arc that belongs to this angle. So this angle intercepts arc B, B. And then this angle right here intercepts arc A. Okay, but again, nothing about the measures of these that we're, that we're going to talk about just yet. It'll come up soon. And that's